Hey guys, what's up? It's Mac, and today I am here with Ryan Casada. I'm visiting in LA, and I'm having a pretty rad time so far. This is like my third day here or something. But anyways, we're uh, shirtless because we're just, you know, we roam around shirtless and we can see out the window and people just want to see our gorgeous designer nipples. So here we are. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about uh, top surgery then versus now, meaning I had top surgery um, nine months ago. And it's not just not her. And Ryan, how long ago did you have top surgery? Six, six and a half years ago. So what year was that? 2012, January. 2012. Yeah. Okay, so now I feel like top surgery is kind of a thing. Like you go on Instagram or something and like everyone's having top mm -hmm. surgery by a million different doctors. Like, mm -hmm. especially like in the US, like, you know, you can go to your hometown in Oklahoma and there'll be a top surgeon that'll do your surgery for you. Now it's covered by insurance a lot of the times. A lot of different doctors take insurance. Yeah. Um, so now I just feel like it's a lot more accessible. All right, so back in the day, um, I had to live as male for a year. Um, I had to go to, I was, I, I, I had just turned 18 a few weeks before I got my top surgery. Mm -hmm. So being that young and being a minor getting approved, I had to be in gender therapy every week for two years. For two years? Um, I had to get a letter from my gender therapist, the head psychologist at the gender therapy clinic, and my school psychologist. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. So I had to get all that, um, and then, yeah, there was only like six doctors back then to choose from in the whole country. The only place to see other people's results was this website called transbucket.com. That was it. Was that um, just because like you weren't? It was like too scandalous to post surgery pictures people or something. People didn't or? do it much. There just there wasn't many people that have had top surgery back then at that point that were like open about it. Mm -hmm. So that was it. And um, mine was five thousand dollars, and that included everything, the hospital and all that, mm -hmm. which is pretty cheap. Back and then. without insurance, right? No, insurance didn't cover anyone's surgery back then. That was not a thing. Okay. Yeah. Like six months after my surgery, ins some insurance has started covering it. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, I was like, oh, insurance covers it now. And he's like, all right, put it back on. We'll do it again. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. I mean, it was a lot. It was a lot different back then. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really know what to expect. Yeah, I had two sebaceous cysts. One in what each are nipple. Those? It's like when a stitch gets stuck and it's like trying to force itself out. And it happens like it happens like usually sooner mm -hmm. after surgery, but mine happened like a year and a half after surgery. Oh my god! And so, was this before or after you had the nipples pierced? Um, I think I had to take out my nipple piercing for that. Yeah. So I got I got I don't know if they could check see. out the nips. Yeah, they do a little zoom in action. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, so I got la, la. them uh, pierced. It hurts so bad. And look at his scars. Like, they're so hella faded. See your results. Mm -hmm. See so your six months post-op. What kind of, like... Six months. Six years <laughs> post-op. Um, what have you done to kind of, like, take what? care of your scars um, or scar care or whatever? So, uh, after surgery, I didn't go in the sun for, like, a year, which mm -hmm. I think definitely helped. And was that feeling. part of, like, his recommendation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No sun. Even, like, don't wear white t-shirt okay. outside mm -hmm. um, and then I, I used this some um, cream it came in like a yellow thing it was like vitamin E cream it's kind of expensive but like the whole jar was big mm -hmm. it would last me like a year okay. and I'll just put that on every day on my scars and my nipples for about like maybe two years and then every once in a while I still put it on because it like kind of still gets like a little dry sometimes mm -hmm. my nipples get dry yeah any other like tips for people getting surgery nowadays or um I think I think the biggest thing, my, my therapist was really, like, I had to get this in my head, um, that getting top surgery was not going to make me pass any better than mm -hmm. I did before because I'm not on T. And also um, to be, like, mentally prepared because, sur like, this is a major surgery. It's not just about gender. It's like your body is undergoing this major, major trauma when you're mm -hmm. getting cut open or whatever <laughs> so like you need to be mentally mentally prepared for that yeah and a lot of people get top surgery and they, they have depression after for a few months just because your body change it's not about like you're regretting top like surgery but it's missing just missing a piece of your body not even that but it's just that there's the surgery is so much trauma to the body you mm -hmm. know so you need to be mentally prepared to deal with that trauma and uh i wouldn't yeah, I mean, 
don't get sur don't get top surgery unless you are a hundred percent certain that you need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, save my life. Like I needed to get it. I wouldn't like choose to get it if I didn't need need it, but mm -hmm. I needed it to live. You know, yeah. so that's. Yeah. <laughs> we did a video on Ryan's channel. I'll post links in the description. It was about singing and testosterone because Ryan here is, I'm sure y'all know, is an incredible musician. Um, so go check that out. And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below. Share this video and my channel with your friends. If you haven't followed me on social media, what are you doing? The links are in the description. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>